I hate to say it, but this rotation looks like it is running out of gas. Just rotation? I, the whole staff is out of gas. I mean, where do you want to start with this? I mean, I think we should start with the rotation because that's where the bulk of the problems, I think, lie. When you look at Brian Wu and George Kirby, those guys are now way over their career high in innings for the season. I mean, Bryce Miller and Logan Gilbert may pass their career high in innings as well. But you look at Wu, he's at 70 innings right now. Last year, he threw 57, which was a career high because, again, he didn't throw that many innings at Cal Poly. He had injuries. He didn't throw that many innings in 2021 because he came back from Tommy John. So this is already a high in innings for him despite going on the IL. And now his average fastball has gone down. It's it's trending the wrong direction. It's down about a mile and a half over the last month, and it's trended down in each of his last few starts. And Kirby, Kirby's nearly 40 innings over his 130 frames from last season so he's going way over his workload too that might be part of what we're talking about with Kirby I know we just had this whole talk about him but he is going way over his career high in innings so there's been a lot asked to this rotation you mentioned Wu's in it Wu's innings you didn't even mention the innings he already threw down in double a this year before he called him up so he you're right way 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 over his innings limit but I look at this on a results basis too I mean I highlighted you look uh, not counting Logan's start today, I looked over this road trip. The Mariners went three and seven on this road trip. Three of those seven losses, the starters did not even give you a chance to get in the game. Not even a single chance. It was Bryce Miller's last start against the Tampa Bay Rays. Five innings, five earned runs. The Mariners fell behind early and never really had the bats to get back in the game. Like that whole Tampa Bay series seemed like after the early innings, they did not have really any gas to get back into it. Then Brian Wu versus Cincinnati, no chance. George Kirby in game three against the Mets. The Mariners had no chance to get back in that game because the starter never gave them the option to. And these starts really crippled the bullpen. I mean, I have the whole list of starts from this past road trip and the Mariners in that road trip got one quality start out of that entire unit. That includes guys who have higher innings limits than those other two and haven't crossed their their haven't crossed their innings thresholds. This is a group wide effort and not just a workload issue. So how do they fix this? Cross your fingers and hope things turn around in the next three weeks. The thing I was complaining to you about before the show started, as we watched the Mariners blow another lead today, they got a good start out of Logan. But still, in a start that Logan Gilbert went seven innings, the Mariners had to use six different relievers, six different fucking relievers today, and end up still losing. There's no reinforce. Where are the reinforcements coming from at this point of the season? Are there any? You don't have any starters left. Like, this is your group right now. So that's what, that's what makes this concerning. You don't have anyone to plug in to start. The only other guy you could have possibly started over this stretch, you DFA'd yesterday. And Luke, Luke Weaver. That's it. Yeah. Right? And Luke Weaver. And then if you look at the bullpen, too, there is one potential reinforcement arm, Perlander Barroa. He is currently on the taxi squad. He is still yet to be activated. He has still only pitched one third of an inning this year in the big leagues where he walked three way earlier in the season. And they still have not activated him, despite the struggles of this bullpen unit. That's what's concerning right now because it's a tired group. There's two off days left in the year, one this Thursday, one next Thursday, and there's no other relief on the horizon. And Andres Munoz threw a scoreless inning here on Monday, but it was a very, very shaky scoreless inning where he loaded the bases. He had a full count at one point with the bases loaded and he got out of it. But they also talked about this week that he's been battling with some minor hip stuff. I I now wonder if that's maybe what's been the cause of some of these struggles over the last few weeks and it's catching up with him and he's trying to pitch through it given where he's at in the season. It would make sense because the fact he and he doesn't have a slider, he doesn't have the command he had last year. It would it would be a reasonable hypothesis here to say, yeah, that that hip thing might be bugging him. 
it would be. And I wonder if that's, if that's correlated with his workload at all, that he's been really leaned on here in August since they got rid of Seawald. And I, speaking of Seawald, I did kind I, I did think about it for a second. I was like, do, do they regret that now? It's like, probably not because Seawald hasn't been fantastic in Arizona. But uh, anyways, back to the current group. Listen to some of these stats, Lyle, over the over the road trip. I don't have today included, which these numbers would get exponentially worse. Bullpen on the road trip, 29th in F4. The only team worse is the Texas Rangers. 26th in ERA, 26th in walk rate, 23rd in whip, 30th in home run to fly ball rate, 32%. 32. So one out of every three five fly balls the bullpen allowed was leaving the ballpark. And they're 27th in hard hit rate. That, that is a disaster. Yeah, the, the hope is you, these guys are just going to have to turn it around in the bullpen. And to be fair, they did a decent job trying to rest some of these guys back during a raise series because they didn't use a lot of the high leverage guys toward the end. And they did that to try to get them some time off. And then hopefully the day thir- the the off day on Thursday can kind of help them out with that too. But I think the biggest concern again, I, I know you seem to be talking about the bullpen here more, and and from the tone of your voice, it sounds like more of your concerns are with the bullpen. I think mine is with the rotation, and specifically it's with the two rookies. Because look, if this team's going to be a playoff team, you have to rely on the idea of Luis Castillo, Logan Gilbert, and George Kirby pitching to their ability that everybody knows that they can pitch at which are frontline starters. Because if they don't do that, then this team's not going to the playoffs either way. The issue here is Wu and Miller, because you can't just drop every two of five games, and you can't be losing back-to-backs when those guys pitch. Now, they did just split these guys up for that exact reason. But we talked about some of Wu's now struggles with his fastball velo going down. So I look at Bryce Miller now to look at the other side of this coin. His fastball velo is not going down, but the life it once had and the effectiveness it once had earlier in the year, that seems to be gone because the run value is at negative one for the season and opponents are now slugging just about 450 against that fastball. So it's all of a sudden been very much figured out by the rest of the league. And that is what Bryce relies on more than anything. Yeah, and he's got no real secondary to bail himself out if he, if he, need, if he can't find that pitch. But the problem is, over these next three weeks, what are they going to need? Three starts each out of those two, right? About and you got to like if you're if you're going to make a playoff spot and Texas starts playing well, you're going to need to win half of those, right? That's that's a pretty tall task, man. I don't, I don't. It, it is. They could turn it around. They absolutely could. Uh, I'm just saying, there's no reinforcements right now. There are none. Can I can I pivot back to the bullpen here really quick? Uh-huh. Uh, because I, I kind of like this bouncing. Because like there, uh, here's some of my concerns now with the bullpen. If you look over the thing that was most concerning over this road trip, I looked at it on like a war basis, which over a small sample is not perfect. But when I tell you that the guys who had negative war on this road trip out of your bullpen were Justin Topa, Gabe Spire, Andres Munoz, Taylor Saucedo. Does that concern you? Because those are your four of your five most reliable relievers right there who you need to come in and pitch well, and they did the opposite. So even even if you have your three starters out there who you trust right now, Gilbert, Castillo, Kirby, and you need those high leverage guys like Topa, Munoz, Spire, who had another terrible outing today, go uh, come in after them and not perform – like those are the games you want to win, right? Because those are the games you're structured to win with your starter and your high leverage bullpen guys aren't, aren't giving you an opportunity. Not right now. Do you have to try and rely more on somebody like Isaiah Campbell in these leverage spots who has been actually pretty good to be fair to Campbell, but it can't be the only guy. Well, Campbell came in on, came in on Friday and he, he was the one who came in after Kirby, right? On Friday. That, was, that sounds right. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think that I think that was him who he came in and gave up the go ahead homer on Friday. Regardless, you're right. I do think he's been better. Um, so yes, yeah, I do think they need. I need. I want. I I don't see the. I don't see why Perlander Bro is not in the bullpen at this point. I don't. I don't. I don't see what what you're losing at this point. Just just putting him in there and giving some life. Someone maybe who's not as tired. Yeah. 
for sure. He's not pitching every other day in the minors. In the minors, these guys throw one to two times a week. They manage their workloads pretty well down in the minor leagues. So, yeah, it would absolutely be a fresh arm. I would love to see Baroa up. Now, if he can't find the plate again, then fine. You, you don't use him in high leverage. But just to have a little bit of life added to this bullpen would be great with how tired some of these guys are. And here's what it's going to come down to. Because you're going to have to rely on your core bullpen arms that you've relied on all year. Topa, Munoz, Spire, Saucedo, Brash. These guys are going to have to catch a second win. Or they're going to have to catch a final win, we should put it, here in the final few weeks. Because that's there is no number that we can quantify to say, here's what they have to do to get better, better other than, you know, don't give up runs, throw strikes, command your pitches. They're going to have to catch a second win because they're very clearly tired and taxed right now. And it can't continue that way if they have playoff aspirations because they need those bullpen guys. Yeah, if they don't pitch better, they're not making it. It. It, either that or it's going to be as what we, we love to qualify a mid off between the Rangers bullpen and the Mariners, uh, the Rangers pitching staff and the Mariners pitching staff over the seven of those final 10 games of the season. And I, I don't think either, either of us really want to see that because that just sounds like a nightmare seven game stretch of too many runs and too much stress. Those last 10 games are going to be just a nightmare. I already know it. I, I, I know the way we're sitting here feeling right now. I mean, this is, I feel like we're usually pretty upbeat on this podcast. And I think this has been a little bit more of a negative sided podcast, which we're usually pretty good about, about avoiding. Now it's not, it's not ridiculously negative, but there is a little bit more of, uh, I don't know what do you even call it. A less positive tone for sure. And there's reason for it. And I think we're starting to feel what's, upcoming on the schedule you're going to have the Dodgers you're going to have then that 10 game stretch against the Astros and the Rangers and I'm not looking forward to it and I don't think that, like this isn't the main topic of this segment but I also don't think Scott Service is free of blame in this because he does manage the bullpen and just even with his guys being tired I mean even even like the little details of what Justin Topa did today in the 10th inning yeah it was the 10th inning where they have Scott chooses to have Justin Topa pitch to Brandon Drury instead of walking Brandon Drury with two outs and facing what's his name again? Uh, Kyron Paris. Yeah. Have you heard? Did you hear hear of that guy before today? He was a prospect. So yeah, a little bit. Okay. I I had not. Uh, so Kyron Paris had like a 300 OPS this year, and Scott, in summary, decided to pitch to Brandon Drury. <laughs> instead of walk Brandon Drury with two outs and put Paris at the plate and Topa just, he was atrocious. It was right down the middle, the uh, sweeper right down the middle. Drury hits it over the wall. Julio ends up tying it, but again, Julio would have just won it if Topa would have gotten that third out. So uh, maybe, maybe a conversation about Scott can be uh, next week if we, uh, or even later this week, if he, if he makes more terrible ones, I think, that could be a worthwhile discussion, but the vibes are not good in summary. No, well, let's close it on somewhat of a positive note before we get to the interview. Julio, speaking of the home run, 44th player in the history of baseball to have a 30-30 season, which he's 22 years old. That guy's pretty good. Remember when this was a down year? Yeah, and that pitch he hit out. I mean, that was at his ankles and just the coincidence that he was, he wears number 44 and into he is the 44th player to go 30 30 it's pretty cool it's pretty cool and he's got a chance for a lot more so that's fun good for julio and it was the one it was the one year anniversary of that game tying home run he hit against the braves last year congratulations to julio uh, a 30 30 season